This is what I like to call, if you guys have watched my videos before, you'll know I say this. This is the brisket waterfall. You squeeze it a little bit and all of that fat just gushes out and it's a waterfall of fatty brisket awesomeness. Guys, I've failed so many times at cooking a brisket in the Masterbuilt electric smoker, and through that process, I learned and I perfected this recipe that I'm now gonna share with you so you can cook the perfect brisket that's gonna change your life. Let's get to it. The first step to cooking an amazing brisket is to select the highest quality of meat possible. Guys, this is so important. When I started smoking brisket, I thought, oh, I can just buy the cheapest select grade brisket and turn it into something amazing. I said to myself, if only I use the right tricks and techniques, if only I inject it and I marinate it overnight, it'll be perfect. But I learned that this is just not possible. If you want the best results, you're going to have to buy the best quality brisket. So when you go to the store, make sure you buy at least a USDA choice brisket. And if you can, get a prime or wagyu brisket. In Canada, you're gonna to wanna to get a triple A brisket. Do not buy a select grade brisket unless you absolutely have to. It just doesn't have the intramuscular fat that is going to create an awesome high quality Texas style brisket. So what should you look for in a brisket? Well, you want a brisket that's around 10 to 15 pounds and it has both the point muscle and the flat muscle attached to it. It's called a full packer's cut or a whole brisket. It should have a continuous layer of nice, soft, pillowy fat all across the top. That layer of fat is the good fat. It's gonna protect your brisket in the electric smoker and help it cook more evenly. But when you bend it, it shouldn't be stiff as a board because that means it's full of hard fat and you'll have to trim out all that fat and throw it away anyway. How to trim a brisket. Unless your butcher trimmed it for you, your brisket will have a large layer of fat on top. It's called the fat cap. For Texas style brisket, we wanna trim that fat cap down to about a quarter inch thickness. This leaves enough fat to protect the brisket from the heat of the smoker and add flavor while still allowing a nice bark to form on it. If the fat is too thick, you'll get a nice bark, but most people are just gonna peel that inch of fat off and throw it away along with all that bark on it. I know some of you will think that you'll eat all that fat and I did a video on an untrimmed brisket. If you wanna see that, I'll link it up here, but save yourself the heartburn and greasy taste and just trim it down to a quarter inch. It's way better. Trimming a brisket is really easy. You just get a really sharp knife and start shaving off layer by layer of the fat until it's down to about a quarter inch. I like to look behind the knife as I'm going just to make sure that I'm not shaving too far into the meat and there's always a continuous layer of white fat protecting that brisket. It also helps a lot if you put your brisket in the freezer for about an hour before trimming it up to firm up the fat. Now there's a lot of great brisket trimming videos out there and I get a link one where Aaron Franklin actually goes over his process to trim a Texas style brisket. But in summary, you cut out the two hard kernels of fat on each side of the brisket. This is hard fat that you can't really eat and it's not gonna render down. Then you trim the rest of the fat cap down to about a quarter inch. Then you slice off the tips of the flat to make it more aerodynamic in the smoker and so those tips don't just burn up and dry out. It's also really helpful to make a nice cut on the tip of the flat that runs perpendicular to the grain of the meat. That's your landmark telling you where to cut against the grain so you can make nice slices. How much brisket do you need to buy? The rule of thumb that I go by is about a half a pound will feed one person. So a 12 pound brisket will feed about 24 people. And actually I find that if you have a lot of snacks and sides, people will end up only eating around a third of a pound each. But that being said, if you have some big eaters at the event, then you might even need a pound per person, especially if you don't have a lot of extra sides. I always err on the side of caution and buy more than I think I'll need. If you have leftovers, then give them to your guests to take home. You've already wowed them with this awesome Texas style brisket giving them leftovers to take home is gonna make you an absolute legend. Trust me, people really love it and it's totally worth it. What rub to use for your brisket? For Texas style brisket, the tradition is salt and pepper, usually a 50-50 ratio, nothing else, just S&P. You might not think that's enough flavor, but trust me, when people eat my brisket, they always ask for my rub recipe and I tell them it's 50-50 salt and pepper, they don't believe me. You will be shocked at how good this tastes with just good old salt and pepper. Applying the rub isn't rocket science. You don't need a binder like mustard or oil or anything like that. Just get a good old shaker bottle, shake it all over the brisket evenly. Start with the fat cap side first, then flip it over and apply it to the meaty side. Lastly, we're gonna sprinkle about a teaspoon of Morton's Tender Quick over the brisket. This contains nitrites that will give the brisket its characteristic pink smoke ring. The Masterbuilt electric smoker doesn't produce a smoke ring normally in meat because there's not enough oxygen in the chip tray to produce the necessary chemical reaction. So we need to cheat a little bit and use the nitrites to get that nice pink smoke ring. Now this step is totally optional, but if you want that nice pink smoke ring, then do not skip it. Now just let your brisket sit at room temperature and soak in that rub for about 30 minutes to an hour.
power. Prepping your electric smoker. I've learned from many failed attempts that it is very hard to get good bark in the master built electric smoker. This is because the moisture in this unit gets very high and the airflow is very, very low. Now don't get me wrong, I love this unit and I will always smoke on it, but sometimes I jokingly call it the master built electric steamer. So to get around this, I remove the chip loader tray and I plug in a three inch dryer vent. This lowers the entry point of the air into the main chamber so the smoke doesn't escape from the chip tube hole. And it also creates a draft so that air can be sucked into the chamber. The other part of the equation is the exhaust vent. I cut my exhaust vent entirely off and this provides more airflow and it helps create a better draft that'll give you that nice crispy Texas style bark. Now onto the second challenge. The brisket will not fit into the smoker unless we separate the point from the flat and stack them on top of each other or we modify the smoker. Now I've done a video that I'll link up here where I've cooked the point and the flat separately, but I like to cook the entire Packers cut whole because I think it turns out more juicy and it cooks more evenly. So you can do a few different things to do this, but what I like to do is I just prop up one of the Master Biff Electric Smoker racks against the other rack, lean it against the wall, and then I lean the brisket point down and the rest of the flat is leaning on that rack. The point is angled down towards the heat source because it can take more of that heat because it cooks slower, it's a thicker cut of meat. And also we wanna go fat side down because it protects the brisket from all that heat coming from the heating element. It's gonna help it cook a lot more evenly. And now you'll notice that I'm not using any water in the water pan. The brisket is going to create enough moisture that we don't need to add any more. We want good bark and the enemy of good bark, especially during the early stages of the cooking process, is moisture. How long will it take to cook your brisket? It is notoriously difficult to estimate when a brisket will be done, but here's my rule of thumb. A good rule of thumb is about 75 minutes per pound at 225 degrees Fahrenheit. This assumes that you wrap it in foil at around 165 degrees internal temperature. It's a total cook time of between 15 to 19 hours, depending on the size of your brisket. I did a bunch of research on what other websites are saying about cooking time, and I'll link that below so you can see how long you need to cook it at 250 and 275, unwrapped versus wrapped, for example. So check that out in the description section. Smoking your brisket. We're gonna smoke this brisket at 225 degrees Fahrenheit. After about two hours, I like to crack open the master built electric smoker and let any steam out. A lot of steam builds up and it can dissolve that bark or prevent it from forming. So just do this after two hours. It's the only time you need to do it. After four hours, we're gonna start spritzing every hour because the bark should be getting close to set and you don't wanna wash it off before then. When we're spritzing, we're just hitting the dry spots. That usually means the edges of the flat. We don't need to spray the fat or any areas that look like there's moisture pooling on it or they're still wet. That's just gonna inhibit good bark formation. When the brisket loses enough moisture, it's actually gonna shrink down and we can remove that diagonal rack. I like to put a beer can under it at this point because it prevents pooling on top of the brisket. So we just lay it down on the horizontal rack right above the heating element with the fat side down to protect it from the heat. Now I just kept rolling until about the 10 hour mark at which point I decided I wanted to wrap this brisket. We want to wrap by color. A good rule of thumb is to wrap at 165 degrees Fahrenheit and this usually works and it's what I tell people to do when they're cooking their first brisket but it sometimes means that you might wrap it too early before the bark is set and it's really dark and good. So we wanna keep going until that bark is where we want it to be. Some people like deep red mahogany color and they always say wrap at that point. I like to actually see it get a little bit crispy and black because when we wrap it in that foil, the moisture is gonna dissolve some of that bark and back off some of that bark. So it's better to go a little bit further than you think you wanna go because the moisture is gonna soften up the bark a little bit. So in general, I might wait until around 170 or even 180 degrees internal temperature before I wrap my brisket, depending on where that color's at and how fast the bark is developing. How often to replace your wood chips? Because this is a Texas style brisket, I am using oak. Usually in Central Texas barbecue, they use a type of wood called post oak, but any type of oak is kind of the nearest equivalent to that. So make sure you use an oak to be as authentic as possible. I'm starting with a full chip tray of oak chips and every time I open the smoker, I'm replacing them. So for example, at the two hour mark where I crack open the smoker, I'm replacing the wood chips. And again, at the four hour mark where I start to spritz the brisket every hour or so, I'm replacing the wood chips again. I wanna get as much smoke flavor on the brisket as possible before I wrap it, because once I wrap it, it's not gonna be able to absorb any more smoke. 
wrapping your brisket. Why are we wrapping this brisket? Well, it's to retain moisture and speed up the cooking process. We could wrap it in butcher's paper, which is a great way to let some steam out so you preserve the bark while still retaining moisture in the brisket. But for this cook, I wanted to keep the brisket drippings and create an au jus to spread on the brisket slices, which is awesome, it's so delicious. So I chose to do the traditional Texas crutch method and wrap it in foil. I like to add a cup of beef consomme or beef stock to the foil. Beef consomme is basically just beef broth with some MSG and other delicious stuff that makes your brisket super tasty. If you're worried about MSG, just use beef stock or find a beef consomme that is MSG free. Now this is where the thermometer is important. Insert the thermometer into the thickest part of the flat, which is right underneath the point muscle. It's a bit hard to describe, but basically you wanna go with your probe in through the fat seam and then into the thickest part of the flat underneath the point. This is going to be the area that rises in temp the slowest, and it's also the last to finish cooking. Now at this point, you could put it back in the smoker at 225 and keep going, but that's gonna take forever. So I crank the heat up to 275 after it's wrapped. The foil is gonna protect the brisket from the high heat, and it's gonna allow it to cook a lot faster. So keep going at that temperature until your brisket is finished. Finishing your brisket. There's an internal temperature zone that you need to hit in order to render the connective tissue in the brisket and make it super tender and moist. That temperature zone is 195 to 205 degrees Fahrenheit and you need to hit it and leave it in that temperature zone until it probes tender like room temperature butter. Once it hits that temperature zone, we're gonna start probing for tenderness. Probe in the thickest part of the flat and it should feel like room temperature butter. Now here's the biggest mistake that people make when they're cooking brisket. They probe into the point muscle and they see it's 205 degrees Fahrenheit and it probes buttery, but the flat is still a little bit tough. But then they think, oh, that's what the recipe told me. Just go to 205 until it probes tender. So they take it off. But then the flat is super tough and leathery and it's not fully cooked. So here's my biggest piece of advice for you guys. Do not take that brisket out of the smoker until the flat probes like room temperature butter. Make sure it's as tender as the point muscle is. Otherwise, just keep going and check it every 30 minutes until it is done. All right guys, this brisket has rested about two hours since we took it off the Masterbuilt electric smoker. I'm pretty excited to look at it and see how it turned out. So I'm gonna take off this foil on the outside. I'm just gonna take this right out actually. Little bit of drippings on the inside. You can see there's a lot of liquid coming out of the foil. I'm just gonna let that go into the pan because I wanna save that au jus to actually put on the brisket afterwards because it's super delicious when you spread it onto the brisket slices. So now we'll open this up. I like to leave a little bit of au jus in the foil because it kind of drips out on the cutting board and it's important to have some fat and oil on the cutting board and some of that au jus because when I slice into the brisket, I wanna take some of that au jus and rub it onto the meat so it doesn't oxidize as quickly. I'll sh that sounds weird, but I'll show you guys in a second. Okay, this is, this is amazing. This is the best color I've ever got probably on a Masterbuilt electric smoker cooked brisket. I cooked a brisket about three or four years ago, unwrapped all the way, and it was a little bit darker than this, but I'm gonna go on a limb here and say that this is probably a lot juicier because we wrapped it. So let's take a look at this. I'm gonna take this right off. Now, let's turn this around. We got the point muscle over here, we got the flat over here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut it right in the middle. I call that the glory cut, and I pretty much cut it that way for all my videos because that gets most views and it looks the best, pretty much. Typically, if I was just cooking a brisket for myself, I would just go off this landmark right here that I showed you earlier in the video and I would just slice, 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 and then I would slice the point up. Or alternatively, I would just slice the flat right off of the point right in that seam. But uh, for these videos, I kind of like to do the most uh, impactful cut just to show you guys how juicy the brisket turned out. So. This is the landmark place, so that is the direction the grain is running, so we wanna cut right about here. I'm just using a normal bread cutting knife. We'll slice right through. I can already tell that this brisket is perfectly cooked just from the resistance in the first few inches of cutting it. We'll open this up. Look at that, wow. This is what I like to call, if you guys have watched my videos before, You'll know I say this. This is the brisket waterfall. You squeeze it a little bit and all of that fat just gushes out and it's a waterfall of fatty brisket awesomeness. 
So now I'm going to turn this upside down to prevent it from oxidizing. And in the same way, I'm just going to get a little bit of fat on this face of the brisket so it doesn't oxidize as much. Then I'm going to take a slice. I'll try to do about a quarter inch thickness here. This bread knife is getting a little bit dull. It's probably time for a new one. But it's okay. Looks like it is cutting just fine. So we got the flat muscle up here. It's a little bit drier than the point down here. And you can see that it bends over on your finger quite nicely. My finger, actually, not your finger. <laughs> and now we'll pull it apart. And it's got a little bit of resistance, but it comes apart quite easily. See if I put a little bit more tension there, it comes apart really easily. Let's take a barky piece here. Oh, mm. I could eat that all day. The final thing is don't do this with a select brisket. Get a choice brisket or a prime brisket. A select brisket is gonna be much drier than this. You're gonna be cooking your select brisket and you're gonna be like, Steve, what is this recipe? You gave me this recipe, I followed it to the T and my brisket is dry. It's because you got a select brisket. So go for the choice brisket, spend a little bit extra money, or if you wanna spend some more money, get a prime brisket. All right guys, see you in the next video.